What's going on? It's your girl, Super Cindy, and welcome to Let's Pop Off! <laughs> Shout, yeah, shouts to my studio audience in the building. They're gonna be popping off too. But on this week, my guest for this week, she's a rapper. She's on Love & Hip Hop Miami. She is a legendary dancer, exotic dancer, and she's added author to the list. My girl, Miami Tip. <laughs> what? What did you just say? I didn't hear you. Uh, you are, are too. In, uh, you want me to bring up the music videos? You are a rapper. Stop it. Oh, I should have said artist. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going to say artist. And my next girl is in the building as well. She's on Love & Hip Hop Miami as well. And she's a artist as well, my girl Sukiyana. Hey, so let's start with Miami Tip. Miami Tip, you are a legend across the world, I would say, with your skills of exotic dancing. How did you learn how to do that? Or how did you even find out that you knew how to do that? Um, not having no money. And then you found you just climbed that pole and flipped around. I, like, I gotta be different. So I'm gonna do something <laughs> different that they're not doing. So when I started, nobody was doing that. So basically, yeah. for those that have never seen Tip that are watching across the world online, um, basically Tip will climb the pole and like swing. And there's more girls doing it now. Acrobatics. Acrobatics. But were you like the one of the first to do it, if not the first, right? Yeah. The first to do it, like the white girls were doing but I was the first to do it like in a wild way into urban music. Hello, to hip hop. I took it up a notch. Okay, <laughs> so we want to thank you. And I want to talk about author. Well, we'll get into your book in a minute. Now I want to talk to my girl, Suki Anna. Hey, yo. So how did you realize that you wanted to get into the music scene? Um, I think that people wanted me to get into it. Mm -hmm. And I just... I started rapping when I was six, and you know, I'm really just that girl out here. Everybody just loves me, so you know, it just happened. Your social, oh, your social media following is insane. Your social media following is insane and has gotten bigger and bigger. What is it about your IG page? Let everybody know what your IG page is. Um, my IG page is Tukihana Go. And you get, you can see me rapping, showing my music, and showing my personality. Okay, for real. <laughs> and um, what like what made you create like the image that you have on social media? Because I know it's like you, but like, how did you realize? How did you start getting followers like that? Like just everybody looking at what you were doing. Um, cause she real. I'm just a realist. As bitch from the south, and <laughs> I just feel like um, a lot of people relate to me. Like a lot of females, a lot of mothers, baby mamas, all the bitches in the hood, they all relate to me. So that I mean, they supported me from day one. All these drug dealers and the scammers, the hood niggas, they all supported me. So that's why I'm famous. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about your book tip. Um, let everybody know the, the, the title of your book. My book is called The Bottom Line, and it's an anthology about 10 different women who come from 10 different walks of life that all got into the strip club game. Some of them overcame it, some of them got swallowed up in the game, but you know, it's a, it, everyone has a story, and my book talks about it. I love it. Thank and you. then, okay, so we just saw Love and Hip Hop Miami, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how did you think that episode went? Uh, a lot was edited. <laughs> Tell us the tea. Tell us the tea. The behind the scenes secrets. Because it was a lot, but it was cute. They cleaned it up nice. <laughs> AKA, I want to be on next season, so let me be nice. Okay. No, 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 no. Seriously, that's not what I'm saying. I'm really saying uh -huh. that they cleaned it up nice. Because a lot of them look nice. Did I look nice? You did. I feel like I, I feel like me me and Tip did a great job. You know, it was nice seeing Joy and Trina. I feel like um, I I actually loved it. The only thing that I didn't love was Shay Stank ass pussy. On, on set, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. 
But other than that, it's it's really it's really <laughs> nice. It's really nice to be in a part of the cast. Like it was. But my great. whole thing is. Like we're only in episode three, so we we're not really a hundred percent clear on who who hates who, who dislikes who, who has. I people. think all, I think a lot of them hate me. And why do you think they hate? Because you? I got all this fat ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and you get what you need. <laughs> so they. Hate. How do you think this season is gonna go? I like, think it's gonna be very entertaining. I honestly feel like Miami is gonna be the highest rated because we got a lot, it's a lot of exclusive people on there. We got a lot of personality. We got Jocelyn on the show. Uh -huh. We got Trina, we got Tip, we got Suki. A lot of people in the world is really tuned in to watch me walk around with all this fat ass that I got. So I'm so <laughs> What was your favorite part about filming and your least favorite part about filming? Both of you, I'll ask. You go first. Okay, my favorite part was um, getting a chance to show my personality. And, you know, I, I know I inspire a lot of people from the streets, so I, I know when they see me on TV, I give them a lot of hope. Because, you know, watching me on TV and knowing where I came from, it make everybody feel like, you know, I can make it out if I, if I just try at my dreams. You feel mm -hmm. me? So that, that would make me happy. And the least part that I don't like, like, I, like, I don't want sound like a bitch, but I don't really like being around like a lot of superficial people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, a lot of them bitches is fake and they don't got no struggle. So they don't really, they don't really relate to me. And then on top of that, you know, I got, I got three kids. I got a lot of baby daddies. I don't really, I'm, I'm really, I'm really a real person. I'm really mm -hmm. a real person. So when I go on that show, they act like I'm too ghetto or I don't fit in. So it's like, they got like their little cool crew and then it's Suki Hana, but they don't know Suki Hana finna surpass all them puss ass hoes. <laughs> Those same hoes gonna be at my mother in the crowd at my show talking about I know that girl. I was I was on set with her. Yeah. That's my favorite and least favorite part. <laughs> Wait, but how did you get discovered to be on Love and Hip Hop? I just love Miami, period, yeah. and Miami love me, so I think, it, I think it's a good opportunity for me and the show to collaborate. I got you, and Tip, what's your favorite and least favorite things about filming? My favorite part is when I cash my checks. <laughs> my least favorite part, because they, 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 they have cash them checks. Oh, yeah. Period, cash them checks. <laughs> It put in me in drama that I don't really care for, that I would never think about in mm -hmm. real life, but it's like, whatever. That's yeah. my least favorite. And yeah. you know what, like the funniest thing is like when you're coming home from work at night and you do these videos, like expressing yourself and stuff, <laughs> like people take what you say and then they start like building something else out of it. It's like so weird. They always come after you. Like I don't I've know, noticed you know that. what it is, is that people know that when I speak, I'm speaking the truth. Yes. You know, speak, I'm never going to speak something I don't know. Yes. Nothing that I can't say, oh, this really happened. So. You know, for us in Miami, a lot of people in Miami, they know me, they know my personality, they yeah. know how I come. But when it, you know, Love and Hip Hop puts you on another platform where it's people all over the world, they don't know you, they don't know my characteristic, my personality. So they're like, oh, that bitch a hater. No, bitch, I really know these people and I know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Miami fuck with me, that's all that matters. Like, this is where I'm at, this is the trenches that I'm in. So Hello. As long as Miami fuck with me, I'm good. Everybody else don't even matter. Period. I got you. <laughs> so, Suka, we gotta talk about your latest single, All In Your Throat. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you come up with that title, the song, and everything? I felt like, um, <laughs> I feel like sometimes, you know, people might judge me from my music because it's really vulgar, but uh, a lot of a lot of y'all in the crowd be sucking and fucking, and a lot of y'all done sold some cat. So it just made it made me realize like I just want to be unapologetic about it. And okay, bitch, put that dick all in your throat. Who don't do that? Who doesn't do that? How many how many of y'all had a dick in your throat? How many of y'all? Who wants to comment? <laughs> Anybody want to take the mic and comment about what Suki's saying on that topic or should we move on? Look, everybody's <laughs> They say we agree, but, <laughs> but that's what she does. She speaks 
on, you yeah, know, the you. people with no voice. Yeah, you I know, got that's you. That's what she speaks for. I like got I you, say, I got like you. I say, in the beginning of the song, my rent do nigga, let me suck on it. <laughs> Put that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes when your rent is due, you might got to do a little something strange for a piece of change. Bitch, it happens. Don't let nobody make you feel bad. <laughs> You, do you want to fuck a broke nigga or bitch you want to get them bills paid? Which one? Y'all want to, do y'all want to get them bills paid? Yeah. Thank you. So I let's talk good. about the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the challenge. What type of videos have you been receiving in your DMs about the challenge, honey, or getting tagged on? A lot. I've been, I, All I in can't your even challenge. post some of the videos. Because like, gonna, they're going to shut down your page, Exactly. Right? Yeah. I can't repost. I, I, I post a lot of them on Twitter. Y'all can follow me on Twitter at Sukihana Goat. Um, they, they're doing like strange things with cucumbers <laughs> in public, you know, but if y'all do the challenge, basically all y'all got to do is play my song all in your throat in the background, and y'all can dance, y'all can show your throat skills, whatever, you can win a thousand dollars. Make sure you tag me. I'm gonna do it. All I can say is I'll never look at animal <laughs> balloons again, like the same way, like those exactly. animal balloons that girl you did the video with. <laughs> Crazy. Who inspired both of you with your music careers? Like, who were you inspired by? Some artists. I was inspired by everybody knows that I'm inspired by Trina, Kim, um, Ross. I, I like a lot of people. Trick Daddy. Like a lot of them, Tupac, they had a big influence on my music. That's why a lot of the people that I named, they don't give a fuck. And, and I don't give a fuck either. <laughs> what yeah. about you, Tip? Who are some of your in influences? No one influenced me. I, it started off as a joke for me, mm -hmm. and I seen that it could make money. <laughs> so I uh, perfected my craft. Period. And I started making more and money. And money in Okay, get that money, sis. <laughs> All right, so let's get on our first topic. Now that you know the ladies a little bit more, make some noise for them. Thank you. So recently there was a story online um, that Offset premiered his clothing line in Paris. Mm -hmm. So they had like an after party for Paris Fashion Week for Offset's premiere, and Quavo came to the party. Now when Quavo arrived, Offset and Cardi B had already left. So when he got there, the security didn't know who he was. So one of Beyonce, who knows Beyonce's the twin dancers, the twin brothers yeah. that dance for her? Well, they're from Paris. And one of them was at the club, and he went to the security and said who he is mm -hmm. and let, let him in. Security let him in, but by the time that happened, Quavo went in there and was going ham and started like throwing punches at everybody because he was pissed. And even allegedly, Beyonce's the twin dancers, the twin brothers yeah. that dance for her. Well, they're from Paris, and one of them was at the club, and he went to the security and said who he is. Club, event, concert, whatever. And we always don't get in because we're known, but we don't always get in as soon as we walk up to the door. So when things like that happen, what makes you boil over at what pisses you off when you go to security for clubs? If they don't let me write in, when I, I'm leaving. Yeah. So I'll you leave like, when you? I'm not waiting. I'm waiting not, in no lines. Uh uh. Ain't nobody got time. And for I know that. it's probably like, I'm, but I'm just, I don't know. Like, I don't see. I came I up a long time just walking in. Everybody knowing who I am. Yeah. I take care of everybody. We're like, so spoiled though. Like right. we walked up with the door. If I don't walk <laughs> in, I'm leaving. And first of all, if I don't know that I'm walking in, I'm uh -huh. not going to. You the don't club. go. I'm not going. Yeah. The owner or somebody has to know that you're walking right. in and going. Right. What in a club would ignite you popping off in a club the way Quavo did? Because that, that pissed him off and made him go ham. So what is something that would possibly well, I mean, make Quavo you go like that? Well, I mean, Quavo is Quavo. So yes. I understand, you know, his, like, I would have been mad too if I was Quavo. Okay. Um, but me, like, me getting mad in a club, it would have to be, like, random chicks coming over and just taking a bottle and, Pouring their own drinks and they ain't with us. And I was like, <laughs> the, bottle. the bottle thing. Right. No, you know what really pisses me off when I'm in a club is basically like if I'm dancing or grooving and there's somebody next to me and they just like repeatedly keep like bumping into me and act like I don't exist. <laughs> like at one point I just stop and I turn around like I'm like honestly. I'm, I'm next to you. Yeah, that rudeness. I hate that. So has anyone ever had a physical altercation in a club and what was the reason? Did anybody ever jump you? Anybody know? 
Michael B. Jordan, you know who that is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make sure. The baby and DC Young Fly. I know your answer. So who would you marry? <laughs> I know her. Who answer. would you smash? <laughs> and who would you trade off? Okay, so I would marry Michael Jordan. Okay. No, Michael B. Jordan. Well, who the fuck is Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> Well, who is Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Michael B. Jordan? Is the actor, right? From, from Wakanda forever. From oh, Black yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? The main one? Yeah. Oh, his black sexy ass. And he was oh. in the boxing movie, Rocky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Okay, I'm. I'm <laughs> true. I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to marry um, DC Young Fly because. I'm goofy and I need to marry a nigga that can make me laugh all oh, motherfucking day long. Oh, so so I'm gonna marry him. You know, they both had their level ups and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I would marry him. I would trade the baby because he he has a happy family. He loves his baby mom. I support that. I really support I support Aww. that. So I'm gonna trade the baby and do I kill somebody? I kill somebody. And then you, then no, then you don't kill somebody. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a, I, I need a I need a nigga from Wakanda. So he. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on his face. All right, <laughs> I like those answers. All right, so Miami Tip, your your options for Mary Smash and Trade are 50 Cent, Ari Fletcher, who is uh, Moneybag Yo's new girlfriend and G Herbo's baby mama. So Ari Fletcher. You just had to put it. Out yeah, there. she's gonna she put a girl. I just wanna. I just wanna, what? Okay. And it don't matter if they're with somebody. Who cares? Yeah. And Lil Boosie. I mean, I would smash Ari. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you gotta do something with the ba with Lil Boosie and 50 Cent. You gotta oh, trade man. one and marry and, and um, marry one of them. 50 look good. I don't like niggas from New York. They think they talk too much. So you would trade 50. I'll trade 50. And marry and Lil Boosie. Boosie. You'll be the stepmom no, no, to no, no, no. All right, all right. So oh, then I'm gonna marry Ari, because I could deal with her for the rest of my life. And what is it? Smash Boosie or 50? I'll smash Boosie. Not 50? I wouldn't smash neither one of them, but if I have to pick, like. She's like, can I trade my options? I'm definitely not doing 50. He talked too much. <laughs> She's like, no, trade off New York. Right. All right, so anyone want to play the, the Mary Smash or trade? Who wants to answer? Zoe that? with the blue hair. <laughs> yes, yeah, Zoe Brinks, come here, girl. Yes, come on, girl. Come here, girl. I love her. I love her. Yes, me too. Zoe come Brinks on, in the building. Period. So, Zoe, we're giving you the options. Do you want Tip's options or Suki's options? Okay. <laughs> All right, so you have the options of um, Mary Smash and Trade. And your options were, wait, I lost it. Uh, 50, Ari, 50, and, Ari, and, Boosie. Ari and Boosie. How would you do it? Oh, damn. <laughs> okay, Ari, I'll marry Ari. Right. <laughs> Everybody wants to marry Ari. Right. Yeah, she bad. <laughs> yeah, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Who's the other people you said? 50, 50 and Boosie. 50 and Boosie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 50 Cent. She stuck like me, like no. Yeah, 50 Cent do be running his mouth. He be putting everything on Instagram, you feel me? He be do shit, he's gonna put on the load, you feel me? Yeah, he be tripping, yeah, Boosie, same thing. Okay, same you guys got the same thing. I need to switch up the options probably next yeah. time. Okay. Right? All right, so now our next segment that we're getting into, we're gonna be speaking about getting work done, AKA plastic surgery, right? Mm. So, what made me think about this is that for the last few weeks, Cardi B has been walking around with a ski mask on, right? Uh -huh. So all her fans are like, what's going on with Cardi B? Did she get work done on her face? Like, why is she hiding her face? So my whole thing is, back in the day, everyone used to hide the fact that they got work done. Like, you weren't allowed to say you got any type of work done. 
One day you had boo, um, they had no boobs, the next day you have them, and it's just magical. <laughs> or with the booty or whatever. So now it's okay, or I'm asking you guys, is it okay to expose that you got work done? Yeah, I mean, with Instagram, social media, everything now, mm -hmm. of course, it, it's a new trend. Yeah, like it's not, you don't have to hide what you got work done. Exactly. Even how, what about when you're bruised and messed up after the surgery? I mean, you? but that goes by quickly because I'm bruised and messed up. <laughs> you <laughs> said what? <laughs> Period. So Suki, you it were, goes by quickly. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna say, Tip? Go ahead, go ahead. I didn't hear you. No, said. it goes by quickly, so it's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Suki, you you were on your social media recovering publicly, and you had no problem. What are your thoughts on the whole like getting work done? I mean, I don't have no problem. Well, I, I feel like we put too much pressure on other people's body. If mm -hmm. you want to get your ass done or your titties done, some people like I breastfed three babies. If I, I wanted to get my boobs fixed, so I got them fixed. And if a nigga want to buy me an ass, I'm going to let him. So at the end of the day, if, it, it don't matter how you get it. If you, if you want to get fit or you want a fat ass, it don't matter what the procedure is. You do what you want to do. Because people always talking about, oh, well, you should have just worked out. Bitch, let people live their motherfucking life. It be ho it be right. hoes. It, it be the hoes that be mad at their own body. Body shaming people that get work done. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to get your ass done, you want to get your stomach tightened, do you. Don't let nobody else tell you what the fuck to do. I done got surgery a lot of times. Like, <laughs> me too. Anyone want to talk that. about the whole too, cat too. surgery <laughs> thing? Like, is it cool to just expose what you got done? Are you cool with it or whatever? All right, let's come on. Anybody else? No, she, um, get up, go to the mic. Anyone else want to talk about it? Go right there as well. You got to go to the right doctor. You got to spend the right amount of money. You can't be cheap. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, when people start putting, um, like, when people start putting substance, substances you guys, you guys. And when people start putting plastic and different things that's not supposed to be in their body, like, I really feel like they don't care about their health. But, you know, I got a um, fat transfer. Like, I didn't want nothing fake in my ass. I want my niggas to still grab on my ass and, and feel like it's soft. I mean, a fat transfer is just transferring your fat. Like, you ain't got to worry about no fat turning, you know, falling out your skin. I feel like, shit, the fuck? <laughs> you know that. Um, In other words, you got to go to the right doctor. You got to do the right research. And you got to spend the right amount of yeah. money. Cause. But what about the people that see K Michelle? She had money. She probably went to the best doctors. I'm assuming. I mean, and she had a heart. She had like 15 surgeries to correct what's going on with her. Well, I, in K Michelle's uh, situation, she said it. She said she went to the guy that was doing shots. Mm. A lot of us went to the guy that was doing shots. This is like 10, 15 years ago. So mm -hmm. back then, black girls wasn't on the plastic surgery that the Spanish girls was doing, which was the body transfer or whatever. So to get a fat ass, we was going to the guy that was doing shots. So some of us, you know, everybody's body reacts different yeah. to it. So she was one of those people who had a bad reaction. Mm -hmm. Now that BBL and going to an actual doctor is popular, she finally went to a doctor and figured out that but that she had what before. It is, right. I think everybody should just go the safe route. If you don't, if you don't have time to work out, and if you don't you have wanna, the money, just don't go. I, and I think <laughs> after you get the surgery, you still should work out to keep up with your fitness. But make sure you take the smart route. Don't just go to some hood doctor because you want your ass back. Because that shit, you could get very sick in the future. So I mean, just take care of yourself. And the most important part of plastic surgery is the aftermath. It's not the surgery itself. Yeah, it's it's what recovery, you have to go post. through after. Like that shit yeah. hurts. And what you have to go through after to maintain that shit, it hurts even worse. And you have to do it consistently for it to be done right. So you can't think, oh, I'm going to get this surgery. I'm going to wake up fine tomorrow. You're going to wake up fine. But then you're going to have all type of water retainers and all type of shit going on that you have to go to the doctor every single day, no matter how much it hurts. Mm. And that costs a whole lot more. But that's a whole nother check. Yeah. <laughs> well, what did you have to say? What's the best doctor to go to in Miami or Fort Lauderdale to get that stuff done? Strats for 
rejuvenation. <laughs> Just listen to 99 Gems and you'll hear me talk about it. <laughs> Next question. We don't want to promote know. any other doctors on my right. phone. <laughs> sure, also, we ain't get paid for that. Yeah, we ain't get paid for that. Miami tip about some stripper tips. Okay. Because I'm a dancer at Floppy Rooster in Miami, and I need to know because... You wear a dancer wear? Girl, where are you? I got skirts on my knees. I be on all fours. I be getting that cash, though, but I need to know, like, so I can save myself. You feel me? But where did you say you dance? Floppy Rooster. Oh, Floppy Rooster. Something Floppy Rooster. Rooster, we going there. Yeah, when we, we going there. By. We got to go we there. Go where is that at? Don't stop by T.T. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. Where is, that? Where is it at? Um, where is it? That's located, like, over there, like... North Miami. We're going. All right. I'll send you the flyer. So I'll put you both the flyer. Huh? What's your tip so he don't get bruises? But he needed tips for this. I didn't hear the question. I was just he asking about the club. It's free tips. entry around 8. We close at 3. Okay, you know. excuse me, excuse me. We're not promoting <laughs> this question? club. Uh, yeah. He wanted to know tips on how to be a better dancer. Yes. What From Miami tip. He's serious. How do, what do you mean? How like to tips to be a better, like he said his knees are all What's scraped up and stuff. Yeah. Oh, so you mean like, <laughs> shit, mine's is too. Um, the better dancer you are, the more your knees are scraped up. Yes. So I don't know if they, they're not scraped, you ain't doing nothing. Yes. True. <laughs> like you too, you just, you just. How did I learn? How do you learn? Um, I really did it like the pole, are you talking about the pole or just, Dancing. The pole tricks, like, I just watch, I door, watch a like, white girl do it, and then I just taught myself every time I went to work. Um, but I was with it. I mean, I grew up in front of an audience, dancing, like choreography, dancing in front of, yes. of an audience. I was never scared. Yes. Um, but like the pole, I just watch a white girl do it, and then I was like, that's what's going to make me some more money, because I ain't got a fat ass. That's so <laughs> I started doing the pole. That's and true. Yeah. That was it. That's dope. I like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. And what was your comment? Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up. person, what's your comment? Oh, yeah, I want to go. I'm going to have Tommy. Tommy, he wants to have, he has a comment. Okay. Hi, Tommy. Tommy Williams, brother. Okay. Hello. So my comment is this. I'm sorry, could you please um, stand up where that section, because that's yeah. where the camera is. Right. Thank you. Um, hey, how you doing, everybody? <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, I used to be a celebrity trainer and everything. My stance is this. I'm very, very emphatic about my stance with this. Like, um, when I lived in New York, I used to be a celebrity trainer, and, and, and I really had no patience for those people who had um, gotten plastic surgery and things. And I think more so it was ignorance as well as meeting them not ready to work out. Like people, you know, it's necessary that you take hold of your life and take hold of your own health and have some sort of substance for yourself. Since moving down to South Florida, uh -huh. I trained a lot of <laughs> strippers, and then my stance was, you put in the work each night, and each day, and you know, then I saw the dedication in their craft and in their bodies and how much people wanted to be healthy and physical and active and with a need, they want to live. And then that introduced me to like, you know, the strippers and also the common folk down here. So my stance right now is I applaud people who get the plastic surgery. I have the patience as a trainer. And I also think that it's something that, you know, it's just about preference. So uh, uh -huh. I'm neutral on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your opinion. Part All right, so let's move on to another to topic right them. quick. So you know how everyone uses the word boss? They are boss, I'm a boss, this and that. Yeah. Can everybody really be a boss? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. What defines a boss? I think, honestly, everybody can't be no boss. I, don't, I feel like there's bosses and there's employees, you know. Mm -hmm. And Workers. I feel like a, a real boss is somebody who builds a foundation A real boss is somebody who builds a foundation and he makes sure everybody else eat. But I, I know bosses who don't make everybody in their circle bosses because then if everybody's bosses, then who the fuck gon' who work, gonna work for you? You know, so I learned I learned that I was fucking with this big time kingpin in um, Philly, right? He used to buy me all this shit. He used to buy my ass, he bought me Rolexes and all types of shit. <laughs> but he taught me to feed everybody. But you can't make everybody a motherfucking boss because then how the fuck you going to be a boss? And he said not to hang out with people who want to be you. Mm -hmm. He said hang out with people who know what they want to be because if you got everybody in your circle trying to be you, do they, what you do. yeah, they're going to try to kick you out your motherfucking spot. Mm, that's some good so that's what he taught me. That's what he taught me.
Hello, good advice. <laughs> Tip, what do you think about the whole everybody calling themselves a boss? I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm from a different generation. So, like, <laughs> everybody's calling themselves a boss now. It's for social media and Instagram, but don't nobody own nothing. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, oh, I'm a boss and I'm better than you, but you ain't got more than me. We paying the same <laughs> rent. We driving the same foreign cars, paying the same motherfucking car payments. I don't mm -hmm. know. A boss is probably someone who helps someone yeah, level help up people. in the business while like get more money while you sleep like i sleep at night and i get three different checks every month every week like i don't know so to me you know my viewing is different i don't know i think a boss gonna make sure everybody else be here. and the he money is coming in like money. i can stop what i'm doing for you know a little while and mm -hmm. still make my money another way what you think about this? hello what I think a boss is, is someone who has control of whatever situation they're in and it's actually benefiting them and, and the people they yeah. love. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, if you're calling yourself a boss and then everyone in your crew looks broke down, raggedy, That's what and I'm you're saying. not, yeah, and you're not helping Ooh, I hate that. feed the whole crew. <laughs> Why one person looks amazing and the rest of your crew looks like they haven't eaten that. in three weeks yeah. or something? Mm -hmm. I hate that. You know what I'm that. saying? And I'm not talking about designer clothes or diamonds or anything right. like that. I'm talking about just looking clean and surviving like right. normal well, people. Well, I know, like, if you see somebody in, if it's a boss ass nigga and you see somebody like in, the, in his little clique that look dirty, that's because that's his shooter. They don't give a fuck about dressing. <laughs> this is, this that is, depends on the type of man you dealing with. <laughs> yeah. like, my answer was like the proper answer, and Suki's like in the hoodie answer, like this is the real reality shit. Suki don't know what the hell she's talking about. <laughs> no, she know what she's talking about. It's just on a different no, level. No, Suki know what she's talking about. Me, I'm just like, okay, um, I'm in La La Land. I'm a boss. Okay. Um, what would you call, because I feel like everyone nowadays, I don't care what profession you are, everyone has to have, and I'm not talking about illegal, it could be legal or illegal, a side hustle. Like everyone has to be doing three, four things to survive nowadays the way this world is In set America, up. In America, period. So if whatever you guys want to share, what are some of your side hustles? And after they answer, I'm going to ask a few people in the audience, get up and tell me how you survive. What are your side hustles? Do you do this, this, and that, or whatever? Anyone want to answer except to Nicole? So ladies, what are your side hustles? All right, so. <laughs> but don't end up in jail. <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to be corporate. I, I, know, I know I always was a woman of many incomes. You know, I, I, I used to babysit. Uh -huh. You know, I did hair. I, um, I babysit, I did hair. I had my own little clothing business and shit. You know, make sure y'all have more than one income. Like, yeah, one outlet. Yeah. You know what I always say something like people always say Cindy you're on the radio you're straight why do you do so much no you always have to the way I look at things is you have to throw up 50 forks and see how many stick but to I mean the, the bigger your platform is make. the more you have to work like people will be like Hello? Cindy on TV why you do this why you do that bitch because we, it, 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 you got to work harder then it's like you got to yeah. keep up with what's going on. To maintain. You got to be ready to fly here, be there, do this, do Look that. Good, like, the money got to be coming in. Can. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's how I feel about it. That's exactly <laughs> my... <laughs> You know what's so crazy? Like, when you're in the public eye, people don't get what it takes to be in the public eye. Like, right. yeah, we have perks. There's a lot of good about it. There's right. a lot of pressure. But some, yeah, but it's so much pressure to always look cute, this and that. Like, right about now. And then now, when you don't want to smile, you got to smile. Yeah, like, right about now, I'm, like, waking up at 6 in the morning every day to go work out at 7 because I saw pictures of myself and I feel like I'm too thick, so I that's need to lose weight. I mean, but that's part of the like, sacrifice. When, like, but people no, look at but this I'm life. just saying, like, just, and then after that, you gotta go, I'm at the station all day working. Like, but people just see when you're here, when you're with a right. celebrity they think doing it's an easy. interview. They yeah. just see, but it's so much work that takes, but sometimes I just don't care. I'm Night like, to no oh, really like, multitasking. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of stress that comes with it. But, your relationship, you know. your family, being healthy, right. just everything. And then, and then we're women. 
on top Hello. of all that. So this that time of the month, you're like, oh my God, hell I no, still got to get up and do shows. Hell yeah. Thumbing, cramping. Like, fly here, fly see. there, take this phone call, call do this interview, show yeah. up here, show up there, take these pictures. Like. <laughs> Smile with everybody. But nope. we're not complaining. We love all of you. Okay, so everyone in the crowd, what did you nowhere. have to say about it? <laughs> like, fuck this shit. I'm going to bed. The audience mic, please. Uh -huh. Well, it is definitely necessary, especially in Miami, to have all type of sizes like to get it because it's it's expensive. It's out expensive. Here. It's expensive. The traffic is getting crazy, so that's how you know it's getting expensive. Um, I have like four side hustles. I'm a real estate agent, just turned a broker three weeks ago. I passed my test. Hi. Hello. Go girls. I do taxes. I um, am a event host. I am a anchor in my A. In my A. Um, that's my partner right there. Um, so uh, it's important because you gotta make that money, or the money gonna yeah. make you. You either gonna be a boss or an employee. Period. Exactly. I know that part. I mean, everybody can't be a boss. If you good at being an employee, be a damn good employee. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? Be the best at being you. Um, so yeah, I can definitely say, you know, side hustles is a must. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. What's your opinion about the side hustle? Hello, my name is Noah Starr. Hi. Hey. Hi. I do believe side hustles are important because some days you don't get that money in that bank account, and that side hustle jump right in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that works. I do. My side hustle, I do makeup, as you can see. Yeah. Um, also, I'm a twerk master. I do twerk parties. A twerk party? Here, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Can we see something? Let me see something. Would you like oh, to come up here and show us? Can you come up here and show us? Ask your comment. I want to see them. You can them. put on um, Megan Rada and I'll show you. Oh, Where did they at? Okay. Where's my DJ Megan? Like she popped out. DJ back up. Where you I'm a makeup artist. I make wigs. Um, I love you, Suki. I love you, um, Sandra. <laughs> Thank you. I listen to you every morning, girl. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um, but yeah, and I do taxes as well, so definitely. Yeah, that, that's real. Like everybody's hustling three, four things or whatever. So one of the final things we're going to talk about, and this is something that a lot of us go through. Everyone settle down, please. So, has anyone ever received something like a service, your nails, hair, 
clothes, whatever, and then felt obligated, even a photo shoot or whatever, to have to shout them out on social media. That's what if, I'm saying. Wait, I'm so wait, do a video if you about pay that. for it, do you have to shout them out? I would, listen, I was gonna do this video the other day. Yes. I feel like, I mean, if, you, if I call you for your services, mm -hmm. then yes, then okay. I pay you. But if you call me for your services, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, a real bitch gonna tip you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because we all know we, we out here working, but some people just be like, they be doing too much and it's like, bro, like I got five other people, like me, I got, I got a team that I fuck with, that I'm cool with paying them whatever they want to be paid to mm -hmm. do what I need them to do. You know, when you start going to people for free or for promo, they put you in whenever they want to put you in. Mm -hmm. They got you sitting in the hair shop, bald headed as fuck for 10 <laughs> hours. You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. Like, yeah. I will tip you, but if you call me for your services, I feel like shit. I charge $500 to post on my page. If you mm -hmm. want some goddamn promo, I charge 500. So you want, you want to call me and want to you. do you. And then you want me to pay you like, Exactly. I, I had to ask Suki. I was like, do you tip people like that? She was like, I tip everybody. I was like, well, I tip them, but I'm not, no. So Suki, if you pay for the service, do you have to shout them out? Put Suki's mic on. Because, you know, on. they're using our cosign for a long time. Like, no. Pro probably to help the audience, Mike. How come y'all did Is there something speaking to it? How come y'all turn my mic off? Okay, so I feel like... Um, I, I honestly feel like uh, with ProMail, like if somebody wanted to exchange doing your hair or doing your makeup for um, a shout out, like for you to promote them on, a, on, on your page, I feel like that's even exchange. But also I feel like if I pay you full price for your service, I ain't got to shout okay, you out. Then, then I want you to pay me full price for my service because I've charged a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars to Facts. for you know some some type of promo on my page. You know I, I charge for my service too. I think I think every black business or whatever business should respect each other. You know people don't understand that famous people they they we charge for advertisement. That's mm -hmm. their business. So if you want somebody to respect your business, you know you need to pay for their service too. But I feel like what people some people. I want to do my hair for promo and shit, you know, I still tip them and I offer to pay because I don't always want to post everybody on my motherfucking page. Shit. The fuck, <laughs> I work very hard for my brand. So for your I followers. Mean, <laughs> I feel like it's, it's, it's an equal exchange, but you can't force somebody to promote your brand. Like, you just can't do that. Sometimes people will do it from like, the kindness of their heart, but you got to understand, people have their service fees. If you want to pay for advertisement, pay for it. Shit. Sometimes advertisement costs a lot of money. But so, I mean, a wait, cosign, before you keep going, to, is there anyone who was who was offered a service to a celebrity or whatever and they didn't sh shout you out and you felt some type of way? Like, are you on the <laughs> other end of what we're talking about? Make sure you come up to it or if you have a comment about what we're talking about, get the mic. So what are you saying, Tip? I'm just saying, I forgot what I was saying. I oh, damn. I just, this is a very, like. It's because a big of social debate. media, it's like we gotta be careful what we say. But at the end of the day, like back then when it wasn't on social media, it was word of mouth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you was doing what you was supposed to do, your your product, your whatever you was doing was getting around. Like you can't force us to post you if you're not paying us. If I really love somebody's service to do our hair, our nails, our makeup, if I really whatever. love how somebody does my hair. I, I, like I shot you off because I felt like it. You feel me? I if we fuck with you, because but but see, me and Suki are real genuine people. It's people that are go out there and pay these Instagram models that got millions of fake followers, mm -hmm. fucking Mexicans that don't speak <coughs> English. All they see is your fat ass and your titties. They're not paying for your services and your talent. They're paying mm -hmm. for your titties and your ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got real genuine followers that if we promote it and we keep promoting they'll it, that they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna go yeah. to them. Uh -huh. So me and my page, like if you ain't paying what I want you to pay, like I don't care. You know the way I feel about it is, um, there's certain, I have one hairstylist, I have right now one makeup artist, and I have really one boutique that I shop at, and I always shout them out. But if someone sh mails me something to the station, 
or I don't have no connection with you and I don't ask you, it's my choice to shout if you, you want if I to. want if to. If it fit good, and if it look good. Right. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes you go to somebody and they got you waiting or their shit is, it, I mean, sorry, their, you know, establishment is not clean or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I judge on all of that. Exactly. Like, I know what it is to come from the bottom. I know what it is to be at, you know, somebody's house getting my hair done. So I know the difference, but I mean, I, I, I look at everything. So I want the both of you to say where they, everyone can follow your movements again. What are your social medias? Um, Y'all can follow me at Sukihana Goat. <laughs> and do Instagram. the challenge. And do the all in your throat challenge. You're trying to make it's a thousand dollars to the winner. And Tip, where can they follow your movements? Miami Tip 305, everything. So I want to thank all of you for coming out. Shouts to Phoenix Vodka. I love Shouts to Deco Lounge, aka Alter Ego. Yeah, really Shouts to Windstar Entertainment. Shouts to Citywide Smoke Shop, which is right up the block. And again, Phoenix Vodka, my 99 Jams crew in the building. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Let's pop off. Yeah. Good night, y'all.